Hello everyone. Welcome to Smart Dentistry YouTube channel. If you are a practicing dentist, you would have faced this situation at least once in your lifetime. You would have fixed a crown to a patient and a few days later, the patient will be bringing the crown in his or her hand telling that doctor, the crown got dislodged. You would have been thinking of changing the type of the preparation that we make for the crown or we may be thinking of changing the type of the looting material that we use for cementation. But the ideal answer for this question lies in the alteration of the preparation and getting more retention from the tooth preparation itself. One of the ideal option that is left but which is least explored by the dentist is the endocrown. In this presentation, we will see in detail about endocrown, its indications and how to make an endocrown in your clinical practice. Before going into the details of how to make an endocrown, let's assume certain clinical situations. If a patient is coming with such a scenario in your clinic, what will you do first? The tooth has a pulpal inflammation and so we have to ideally go for a root canal treatment. We will do a root canal treatment and then we will prepare the tooth and we will give a full coverage restoration. It will stay there forever. No problems will happen in such a situation because there is adequate tooth structure remaining. Let's consider another situation. There is quite a gross decay with the pulpal involvement. In this situation, after finishing root canal treatment, we will go for the post followed by a core construction and a full coverage restoration. In this situation also, there will be no chances for the crown to get dislodged. But let's think of such a situation. The tooth is attreated. The remaining tooth structure is very minimal. The occlusal height of the remaining tooth structure is quite modest that it will be difficult for it to retain a full coverage restoration. Added to that is the opposing tooth will be in contact with the occlusal surface of the tooth in question. So in this situation, the chances that a full coverage restoration will survive is questionable. In such a situation, the endocrine will come handy. I am Dr. Benin. I will make videos that will be useful for dentist and dental students. Kindly consider subscribing to my YouTube channel Smart Dentistry. This will be not the only situation you will be needing an added retentive preparation. Whenever the patient is coming back to you with a repeated crown dislodgement, then we may have to consider giving an endocrown. In case of severe attrition, the occlusal height of the tooth will be very less. And there will be many situations where we need extra retention to retain the crown or maybe an fixed partial denture. And there will be many situations where we will not be able to give a definitive 360 degree ferrule around the tooth preparation. And there could be some situations where the tooth will be submerged and fully not erupted or in situations where the tooth is not completely erupted. Most often we can see such a situation in case of third molars. Let's see how to prepare a tooth for an endocrine. Let's consider that we have completed the root canal treatment and we have sealed with a temporary coronal restoration. The first step is to do the occlusal reduction. As I mentioned before, in most of the situation, the occlusal height will be already very less. So we should make sure that around 2 millimeters of tooth structure remaining above the gingival margin. If 2 millimeters of tooth structure is remaining above the gingival margin, that will be more than enough to give a good endocrine. After doing the occlusal reduction, the temporary coronal seal material can be removed and also around 2 to 3 millimeter of the obturation material should be removed from all the root canal orifices. After removing 2 to 3 millimeter of material from the root canal space, that space has to be filled with a glass ionomer cement. We can go for a conventional powder and liquid glass ionomer cement or we may go for a resin modified glass ionomer cement. I prefer the use of resin modified glass ionomer cement for this purpose. 
After sealing the orifice with a glass enamel cement, the remaining access cavity or the internal tooth cavity have to be refined to an occlusal divergence. This can be done with the help of a tapered fissure burr, preferably with a burr which has a greater diameter. Make sure that there are no undercuts present in the preparation. After finishing the internal preparation, then we have to prepare a circumferential ferrule around the remaining tooth structure. This also can be prepared with the help of a round and tapered fissure burr. Depending upon the type of the material which you are going to do the endocrine, the type of the furrow preparation can be modified. If the remaining tooth structure is very limited or if you decide not to give a furrow preparation, that is also okay for an endocrine. So finally, how it is going to look if there is no furrow preparation made? You have finished the root canal treatment, sealed 2 to 3 millimeters of the orifice and the floor with the help of a glass enamel cement, the remaining access cavity is refined to provide an occlusal divergence. The furrow preparation, if it is made well, the retention for the crown is not taken from the external surface of the preparation, but mostly from the internal surface of the preparation. So this internal surface will prevent the crown dislodgement because there is more surface area which is covered by the crown. The critical step in doing an endocrown is to get an impression without any defects because this being an internal cavity there are more chances that the impression can have an air bubble trapped in between. So the light body impression material must be injected inside that preparation first and then only the tray have to be seated. Here we can see how the endocrine is going to look after its construction. You can see that the internal preparation where the endocrine goes deep inside and the ferrule area. So it is circumferentially covering and also internally it is going. But even without the ferrule, we can see that it is a flat area in the finish line without any ferrule and the internal area covered by the endocrine. Let's see a case where a endocrine restoration is given in case of a grossly decayed tooth. We can see that almost no clinical crown structure is remaining. It is too decayed. There is no sound tooth structure remaining to support. After finishing the root canal treatment, the tooth is sealed with a temporary restorative material. This is how it is going to look after removal of the temporary coronal seal and removal of the obturation material for around 2 to 3 mm from the orifice. This is after the building up with a glass enamel cement. In this case, the entire cavity is filled with glass enamel cement followed by the internal preparation and also a ferrule preparation circumferentially. After that, an impression is made and a metal ceramic endocrine is constructed. It is verified in the cast and it is looted. This restoration is very easy to do and this restoration is applicable only for root canal treated teeth. Vital tooth cannot be given such a crown. The ideal material which is recommended for doing endocrine is all ceramics. We can go for an optical impression which will be very easy and then we can go for a catcom restoration with all ceramics. I have made so many metal ceramic endocrowns and full metal endocrowns looted with a simple glass enamel cement. It stays so strong and the chances for the dislodgement are almost nil. It is ideally indicated for molars and even it can be given for premolars. But the recent researchers have shown its success in case of anterior teeth is quite questionable. But if you are recalling the history, the Richmond crown which was performed in high numbers in the past was a type of endocrine. So endocrine is nothing new to us. 
It is a procedure which was there for years together. This was practiced by our elder dentist to greater extent but for some reasons it has lost its interest in the recent past but it is gaining its importance again because of the greater number of advantages. If you are comparing the success of a post and core retained a full coverage restoration with that of an endocrine, the research says that they both are equally good. And many of the recent researchers are pointing more success towards the endocrine. It is also less time consuming, less extensive work for the dentist and it is also very simple. If it is done properly, it will have a good clinical longevity. Through this presentation, I would request everyone, endocrine is a very simple alternative to a complicated post and core restoration. All what we need to do is seal the orifice, refine the access cavity to an occlusal divergence, make a good impression, get an endocrine constructed and loot it. The success of the endocrine is marvelous. Do it in your clinical practice and you will be very happy and you can see the smiling face of your patient. Thank you. Have a nice day.